to his. Like, is it a plus or? Because I mean, like, if I'm in a theatre, I'm, I'm watching Deadpool and Wolverine. I mean, like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know, mate. Got a bit on. Yeah, got a bit on. It's a bit but awkward. also, his family's in here. <laughs> you're not going to turn it down. No, you're not. But <laughs> no. But also, it's probably not something to start the podcast with. But yeah. I'll, is leave, it on here? Leave it in. Um, All um, Anus needs to know. All right, let's do it. Live from the Export Beer Garden Studio and brought to you as always by Export Ultra, the beer for here. This is the Agenda Podcast for the Thursday, the 22nd of August. The Agenda Podcast, the home of sporting nonsense and claptrap. Brought to you by Export Ultra. I said it before, Matt Heath, and I'll say it again. I used to take the piss out of Jason Hoyt because every day before his radio show, he would write down a note, and I would always wonder, what is he writing? One day I went in there and had a look at it, and it was just the day's date. <laughs> it literally said, G'day New Zealand, welcome into Bougeau or the Big Show or whatever. Today is the blah, 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 blah. And I always thought, really? The, the one thing that's repetitive in your show, <laughs> you have to write that down. And here I am, stumbling over the date every day. Yeah. It's harder than you'd think. I don't know what the date is. Oh, it is the, oh, look at that. My minutes hand is over the date. <laughs> Because it's because it's currently quarter past, so I just have to wait there Thursday. That it's just moved. Come around to the twenty second. The twenty second. I know. And the thing is, I do this podcast every day, so like yeah. basic. Just sequences. add one to the. Well, you kind of add one, and then it rolls over. Yeah, you know, and you don't like you're on the. You don't know half, how many days half each month. It's so arbitrary, and I think I've tried. One of my half baked sports ideas had nothing to do with sports. It was a base ten time system. Oh, have I told you about this? Um, I've. Been deep into this because someone oh, you there's, have? there's people trying to get it going. The base ten time system. Yeah. So there's ten hours in a day, ten days in a week, yeah. I guess, ten weeks in a month. Yeah. Well, I, I want to bring in because you know in China, China should have I think it's five time zones, but they only have one because they're like we want to be able to organise meetings. And so, what does it freaking matter if the number is twelve? That's lunchtime. Yeah. If that number is nine and it's lunchtime. That's right. Or twelve, it's lunchtime. It's just you're an arbitrary na- number. It doesn't matter. So I'm like global clock. Yes, because if you're organising a Zoom call, you just want to be able to say global twenty four hour clock, and you say, "Well, uh, it's at three. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what that what what you'd normally do. It doesn't matter if that's your afternoon tea, or it doesn't matter if you're out on the wheeze. It doesn't doesn't matter. It's just at three. So then it goes from a time difference across the world to just a cultural difference. Oh, yeah. in that part of the world, they have dinner at four. And yeah, and isn't it interesting? Yeah, so the number is four, and that's when they have their dinner. But we have it at sixteen. But you're even like, even better, make it decimal. Yeah. Although I've been thinking about the decimal system, and I, I, yeah. I'm going off it because you're off the decimal system because twelves can d- be divided easily into four. I think why they used to have it is like ha- quarters, so, quarters, thirds, halves. It works, yeah. You know, and then I think what happened is we just got so fancy. You know, when people are winning uh, races by a thousandth of a second, uh, yeah. You know that 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 kind of you know measuring a race in, in pounds doesn't work anymore or ounces. Yeah, but you're right about the the time zone thing. Is like. Why don't we just have everybody's on the exact same time? Yeah. Because I used to work in the mainstream sports media and trying to tee up uh, interviews with people in Australia, yeah. shit show. Yeah. Because they're two hours behind us until we go into daylight savings. Yeah, that's what gets you. Then some of them are three hours behind us, but only for two weeks, then they do daylight savings, but then some others don't observe it. Yeah. Plus, I think Adelaide has its own time zone. And I think we could probably work out that with... If, and if we even if are we gonna if we are gonna do daylight saving, why don't we just change the number so you go hey you guys have to arrive at work at eight now yeah like we don't need to change the whole freaking thing we just need to say that you know when it's daylight saving hey daylight saving tomorrow so you arrive at eight tomorrow everyone's got that yeah, yeah. it was seven now it's eight yeah or other way around yeah and we, we're a bit beholden to this this rubbish I'm actually trying to have you read the book Blitzed <clears throat> sure haven't is that the one about meth and the yeah meth and and Nazi Germany and yeah, the, right. the guy that wrote it Norman, Norman Euler He's just written a book called uh, Tripped, which is acid in the uh, <laughs> in Nazi Germany. He needs to be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does. But I'm just trying to tee up an interview with him. He's the literary Paddy Gower. And so I was just trying to work out, and I realised I was too dumb to work out a Zoom call with someone in Berlin. Yeah. I, I just was like, we're going to have to – I really – I love your books. Really want to talk to you, but I, I'm too dumb. Yeah, I'm too dumb to work out to the, line this one up. Line this one up, you know. So, would, so we're gonna have to not do that. There are websites that can help with this. I used to have one bookmarked for yeah. when I was trying to interview, tee up interviews all around yeah. the world. Just be like, right, eight pm our time. Then it's your time. Then you organise an interview and you say, oh, I'll talk to you at eight pm, but you forget to say New Zealand time, yeah, or South African time, 
Yeah. And it's a whole shit show. And don't give me this bullshit about, well, it's too ingrained now, you can't change it. Because when the Russians invented their Trans-Siberian bloody train line, yeah. they put time zones in. Yeah. They were like, we've got to figure it all out because this train, it's now possible for humans to move across five different yeah. <laughs> time zones. So we've got to figure it out. Whereas the Chinese Communist Party went, screw you. You're, everyone's on the same time. It's all the same time. It's all the same time. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> it's like, but, 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 shut up. Yeah. yeah. They, they've got a different <laughs> brand of communism there. Because although I talked to this guy from Wellington who's known as the New Zealand Time Lord, and he's the guy that keeps our time, and they, everyone everyone has a Time Lord, and they, they've all got the, the um, pulsar clocks, and for time to work it's quite compli- complicated, and everyone has to be syncing their clocks around the world all the time. So I right. talked to him and his thing for this. When I was pitching the idea of everyone having the same time everywhere in the world, and he was for it, but... But uh, whose time? Yeah, but whose time? But um, he was saying that we should actually have two time zones. We do actually have different two time zones in New Zealand because we've got Chatham Islands is on a different time zone. Oh, there. right, yeah. But he was saying that actually Invercargill and Kaitaia should be on a different time zone, but we've kind of said, nah, uh, in Invercargill you're going to be up late on in summer. That's a good point. Yeah, so we've kind of, we kind of have done it. It's down south, the sun's up till like 10 o'clock at night yeah. in peak summer. And then when we were down in Dunedin, uh, it was we were so confused, weren't we, when we were recently down there? Sunset shortly after we got up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's not like we started crashing our cars and running around and, and having sort of uh, aneurysms or anything. No. We just was like, oh, that's interesting. So, But hang on, so the Time Lord. So surely, has, is this a full-time employment yeah, for the yeah. Time Lord? And, but th- and they, they're having meetings constantly. Apparently they have no trouble at all working out their Zoom, Zoom calls. <laughs> they're, everyone's there. You'd hope so. But it, it's not as simple as you just set the clocks going. Once a year. They, the, the guys from America have to ring up and go, what's happening down there in the Pacific? Let's link it up. And they're and they're doing they're doing it constantly. I just imagine his whole work day is just Zoom calls. And he, <laughs> what time is it? Show yeah. us your watch. What time is it? <laughs> Twelve thirty. Thank you. Thank you. What time is it? <laughs> what time is it where you are? And they're like, systems working. Okay, hit your button. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, three, two, one. Wait, wait. Do we go on one? Do yeah. we go when you push it, or do we go after? Yeah. Like and rock then, paper scissors. And then you ring Beijing, and you're like, get out of here. It's not that time. Beijing tell you to get <laughs> fucked. Yeah. <laughs> you ring up Beijing. Fuck off, we're doing our own time. Yeah. Look, you guys do whatever time you want, but over yeah. here we're doing. And then why did we, yeah, the Gregorian calendar, let's not go into the whole. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Let's not talk about why October's the bloody 10th month. Let's not get into that either. Because it should be the 8th, It right? should be the 8th, yeah. November's clearly the 9th month, but yeah. that's the 11th. December, look, that's 10th. That's 10. That's 10, but that's 12. So what are we doing here? Overhaul the whole system. Um, I guess you need to have a global Dictator, emperor yeah. to do that kind of thing, make those changes. Well, once China takes over everything. Yeah. Well, could they just get on with it? You know, we know what you're up to. Yeah. <laughs> Although they do have some problematic policies around. The, one of the funniest things when they instituted communism over there, one of the guys, because obviously they couldn't run the farms. This is a sports podcast, by the way. Stick with us. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't run the farms. So whoever, I think it was Chairman Mao or whoever. He was yeah, it was like, Mao. It was all the birds, eh? He's yeah, like, the birds was, are eating all the, all the crops. Yeah, let's get the sparrows. The sparrows are the problem. So we'll kill all the sparrows. Yeah. Plagues of locusts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing to eat the locusts. Yeah, they weren't. They, they, they didn't realise it was kind of like our. Um, I don't know why we introduced possums into New Zealand. What what did that solve? It was po- I feel like possums were brought over here for a reason it's that like, didn't work out. It's like Aussies came over and they're like, "What is with all of this beautiful natural native flora <laughs> yeah. and fauna?" Yeah, got to fuck that off. Or like um those awesome people uh, that bought in gorse for their hedges. Oh, bro, it's like gorse no. kills me. Yeah, come on, that was a shit idea. Like, and rabbits. Yeah. You were too lazy to build a fence, so you brought yeah. gorse in. Yeah. Well, I, I think rabbits were the classic one. Didn't they bring stoats in to get rid of the rabbits? And so what <laughs> then you had is just a shitload of rabbits and a shitload of stoats and very little native uh, fauna. Yeah, and then they brought the Canterbury panther in in an effort to try and <laughs> stop all of that. Then the Canterbury panther got on the loose. The fieldland moose had to be introduced. Yeah, it's it's keep, keep going. Hey, um, this is a sports podcast, but <laughs> slightly off that for a second. I, um, I missed what you said. And I've got to listen better in podcasts because you're telling a really interesting story about um, a guy trying to escape your school and getting attacked by a dog. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, I, and I just ran rough shot over it with a very boring story about Sniff, the dog, or something. <laughs> so I've got to listen. Oh, yes. Because, yeah. Cause and, Joe, I apolo- and I apologise. And I only really realised how good your story was until Joe came into a group chat with you and me and said, I had that guy get attacked by a dog there as well. And I was like, I kind of vaguely remember Manaya saying that. That sounds like a really interesting topic that should have been <laughs> – Leaned into, but then I'm in the pod. I'm just coming across with my beige 
material. <laughs> so this is obviously <laughs> something that had happened around regional Canterbury <laughs> uh, in the eighties and nineties, where they would because his in summer his school would have an assembly outside, and they did the same thing. The whole assembly sitting there, and then a man, just strange man, comes <laughs> sprinting out of a classroom and gets mowed down by a fucking Alsatian, and and in our eyes as kids, torn to shreds before your very eyes. You're like fucking hell. It a real, sounds like a real tough love situation. Traumatised me, man, because he, cause when we did it, it was like come out of assembly and then the teachers were all like, stop here. So we're like, what's happening? Then a man comes sprinting out of a building and, you know, mind you, this is probably a year or two after after 9-11. So I'm like, shit, they found us now. <laughs> right, you might as well have an active shooter in the school, but that's it's, a a, fake, it's a fake active shooter. That's exactly they what come it was. And it's like, God, Davey Feathers has just got mowed down by an active shooter. Well, what I don't understand <laughs> is why couldn't they have told us, given us a heads up, hey, here's how it works when the cops are chasing down a bad guy. No, they're like shock and awe. Yeah. Just traumatise these kids. Oh, I know what I did. I ran rough shot over that excellent story of yours with me being told off for calling a zebra crossing, a pedestrian crossing a zebra crossing, Yeah, which is a very mundane story. So anyway, if you say anything good, just maybe put your hand up and I'll, uh, and I'll zone in. Off the back of the <laughs> His hands up, my hands up. Off the back of the traumatizing um, school shenanigans, Joe asked in the text thread last night, "Did you guys ever have where uh, you they put you into like a mangled up car and then the fire brigade would cut you out with the jaws of life? Yeah. It's like a training thing. I, I that did happen at my school. Yeah, were you? Did you have to get in the car? No, or? I didn't. I didn't get to get in the car. Much to my un, that was really unhappy. Your chagrin, chagrin was the word I was looking for. But I've been saying chagrin, so I was too scared to say it. Yeah, I've only ever, uh, is it chagrin? I don't know, I've only ever yeah. seen it written down and I yeah. can't read. Um, but we, <laughs> I had to do it back in the day. My mate's dad um, and world-famous country music singer Kaylee Bell's dad were in the f- volunteer fire brigade. Oh, for a second I thought you were, she, by, by the way, you're saying that she was your sister? No. Because oh, you said, my dad, oh no, you didn't say is. Also anyway, not listening her, again, yeah, my yeah. friend's dad <laughs> yeah. and her dad. That's just by the by, I just wanted to shoehorn Kaylee Bell into this podcast again. But anyway. it's an all. So, yeah, boots and all. So at the Regent Theatre, which she sold out six times in a row, which is more than the total population of the town we grew up in, <laughs> uh, they did like a, a volunteer fire brigade training exercise where it was like, we've got to pretend the, the theatre's on fire and the fire brigade comes through to find all of the people who have passed out from the smoke inhalation. So my role as a 12-year-old boy was to play a knocked-out unconscious kid who just ah. it would inhaled too much smoke. I've seen you in that state on... <laughs> Fridays and Saturday nights. I've seen you in that state in Paris. I might do it tonight. <laughs> um, and so I, where they put me was sort of just side stage, stage right, uh, and it was behind a curtain. And they lay me down on the floor. So I'm lying down with my head basically at the curtain end, and this dude comes through, boots and all, full fireman boots, steel cap, bat, um, respirator thing, helmet, the tank on the back, whatever that is. He comes through, pulls the curtain back, and as he walks, takes a step, just boots me right in the side of the head. (laughs) "Ah, Fucking hell. And so I yell out, and he bends over to see what's happened. And as he bends, the, like, uh, release valve on his respirator releases, and all of the drool comes out of his fucking respirator just all over my face. I'm like, ah, what the fuck, man? And he goes, hey, shush, you've got to pretend you're being knocked out. That's the whole point of this exercise. I was like, you just spat all over my face and kicked me in the fucking head. He's like, shush, and then carried me out. Wow. Out the front. And mum goes, how was that? Was that fun? I was like, that sucked. I am um, I, uh, not running rough shot of your story, but um, I uh, was on the front page of the ODT because I was one of those kids that makes news by getting stuck down a drain. Oh, really? So I got, I got lost down a drain and couldn't get out uh, <laughs> up on – near Highgate in, in Dunedin. How did you just crawl in? I crawled in. I was like, I wonder what's down there. And I had this <laughs> torch that I'd got for Christmas. And I was like, oh, I'll go down there. And I was about five. And because Māori Hill Primary School is just near there. Went down there and I was on the front page of the Herald Boy Gets Rescued from Drain. And I was in like one of those harnesses that they pull you out of the drain. They lowered it in. They're like, put the... Oh, so you were down, like vertical down a drain? Vertical down a drain, yeah. Jesus. And yeah. then what, they lowered a harness down to you? Yeah. And it's so it was weird because... I wasn't scared at all. I was just like, oh, someone will get me, you know. But I think it called, caused a bit of concern in the in the Dunedin community. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Just good on you for not being. Oh, to shit! Even you telling me that, I'm quite yeah. I, if, if I was down there now, I'd be shitting in my pants. But yeah. There's a sort of moronism, you know. You're a bit of a moron when you're five. Yeah. A little you know, naivete. Yeah, naivete to actually go down there yeah. in the first place. Um, but all's well that ends well. Yeah. You got on the paper. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Probably not what your parents thought you'd get on the front a, page of the paper. Very, I've seen that. It's a very yellow 
yellow bit of paper now. Oh, they've still got it. Yeah, yeah. you've still got it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, round one is over of the greatest New Zealander of all time. Uh, by the way, Heath, there were over 21,000 votes across all of the matchups. That's huge. Uh, the, let me throw some stats at you. The biggest win was Richie McCaw over Dan Carter. Wow. With Richie getting 81% of the votes. No one in the world would get 81% of the votes against Dan Carter apart from Richie McCaw. That's a very good point, yeah. Yeah. And I, it was actually surprising to me, but yeah, Richie just went, and people love Dan Carter. Yeah, they love Dan Carter. In fact, I was just watching... Uh, all Blacks highlights, sometimes I watch on YouTube, they just come up, and I was watching a bunch of greatest moments of Dan Carter on YouTube oh, just yesterday. And there's some, some great moments. Great moments. I mean, his highlight reel is going to be better than Richie McCaw's, but Richie McCaw's doing a lot of work. Yeah. Know? Yeah, he's yeah. putting his head in some dark places. Dan Carter, the TAB, actually, obviously they wouldn't accept bets on something as bullshit <laughs> as this, but they did put together odds for it. Uh, yeah. And Dan Carter was 550. He was the second shortest odds. Wow. And he got knocked out in the first round. So wow. just came up against the buzzsaw. Uh, the closest matchup in round one was Baz versus Martin Crow. And Baz got there. Baz got there with 53%. Now, this was one of the ones that was split between Instagram and Facebook. I think the Facebook uh, audience is a little bit older. So they were all Martin Crow. Ah. Baz was all Instagram. Wow. Well, Instagram was all Baz. But either way, it was very close. Baz, 53%. Did you put up. Um COVID v polio. Be interesting. You probably no. get a similar split on Facebook. No, no. No, no, that wouldn't work. We should. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, no, should. we, should, we should do the greatest greatest <laughs> plagues of all time. <laughs> well, you could go measles v fish, uh, chicken pox. Monkey pox is having a real moment right now. I oh, know. My son came home and said, uh, we've got, we, you know, they're, they're talking about lockdowns for monkey pox. And I was like, it's not going to happen. But that's what I said about COVID. I remember when swine flu came out. Yeah. I think I was still at high school. Yeah. And I knew a dude who had his um, appendix burst and the ambulance wouldn't pick him up because they thought he had swine flu. Yeah. Well, my son was being born in the middle of, one of my sons was being born in the middle of swine flu, flu and no one was allowed in the birthing room apart from me and the, and the person giving birth and a doctor. <laughs> I think the person giving birth was the mother. The mother, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would, you would have met was that person giving birth? I think you would have met her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> first matchup. Oh, sorry. So to go through the odds, I've yep. got the odds. They're on the back of the rundown. It cracks me up. So there were two conferences. Richie McCaw was the shortest odds at $5. Dan Carter was $5.50. Uh, he got knocked out. And also in the other conference, Willie Apiata was the other shortest favorite. He was at $5. He got knocked out by Charlie Upham at five fifty. If I was a gambling man. The longest odds you can still fetch at the moment. The four square guy, eighty one dollars to win the whole thing. Yeah, that's he, he managed to sneak through into round number two. But I quite like you can get Harold the Giraffe at twenty sixes. Jeez, that's good eating. Jason Gunn at twenty one dollars. And I think Jason Gunn because he's getting the most active in the comments. Yeah. So oh, I'll, okay. I'll probably go him if yeah. I was a, if I was to try and me, me and um Jason Gunn are currently in a series of ads. I've seen that. Yeah. He's drinking whiskey. Yeah, yeah. He's a great – God, he's a good man, Jason Gunn. Great New Zealander. Great New Zealander. But is he the greatest New Zealander of all time? Have your say right now on Instagram or Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a quick break. We'll come back and talk some proper sport. Well, welcome back to the Agenda Podcast, ostensibly a sports podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the ASB Classic is happening this summer. They've just announced their first headline marquee player, and it's the big Lulu son. She's going to be headlining Can, the ASB Classic. My, my least favourite person is the person that nickel and dimes whether she's New Zealander or not. Like, she's playing uh, under the New Zealand flag in this. Grew up in town now. What do you, you want? Know, spent some time there. Like, why, why, why would you just just grab it? Grab what you can get. Yeah. It's bloody great. Because, by the way, if LeBron James turned around tomorrow and was like, I'm from New Zealand. Yeah. Everyone would be like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes, I remember she, she's, a, she's Kiwi. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, I, I think we need to yeah, wrap around all of these because most sports people, particularly individual athletes, they have to travel around the world yeah. for their sport. So, you know, there's always they're not going to be just like living in their hometown their whole life. No. How do you think this works? Anyway, yeah. she's going to be there at the ASB Classic. Have you ever been to the ASB Classic? I have, yes. I've never been. It looks like a good time. It's, it's a really, really good time on a hot sunny day there I, I mean I've told you this story before about when I was at the ASB Classic with a well known New Zealand sports presenter that got really steamed and we were heading down there I don't and think he, I do know we this were in the, uh, in the taxi on the way down there and he said I'm so angry about how people have to be quiet and the um you know, why do you have to be – in cricket, you don't have to be quiet. Why, and he just yeah. got a real bee bonnet, he'd, he'd be in his bonnet, he'd been drinking heavily and there was more drinking down there. And then he started yelling in the, in the gaps. 
Oh. And he, and he started yelling that one of the ball boys was a little fatty. He sort of goes, little fat ball boy, because he was just trying to yell some stuff out, and I'm like backing out of the little area we're in, in at the side of the room. What? So he wanted a bit more vibe, and the thing he went for was- I know. It was, call the ball boy fat. Yeah, it was unfair. Was it G-Lane? It wasn't G-Lane. Oh, um, shocking. It wasn't G-Lane. And, and and it was just like, I, I get your point that maybe tennis, you should be able to talk. It should be a bit more vibe. Yeah, I don't know. But, also, but, but, but I mean, it's not. It's, you're not going around. The, you're not going to affect change like that by going after a ball boy. No, that, you know that, that's not how you affect change. You're not going to win hearts and minds and no. this change in the sport. Maybe a bit of let's go, Lulu. Yeah, yeah. But why is it that tennis has to be quiet and other sports don't? I don't know. They are very delicate. It's like yeah. if anything happens, them in golf. Yeah, because because I've heard that like if you're really good at tennis, the the, the sound of the strings. Oh, oh, yeah, it's yeah. a different, too. different in terms of whether they're smashing it or they're, they're slicing you know, it, or yeah, back or whatever. And which is conspiratorially why people for a while were going, <laughs> oh, to cover the sound yeah. of the, oh fuck, I doubt. I mean, I don't know. It could be, yeah. Um, but the yeah, because tennis seems primed for like a darts type atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, you could have such a great atmosphere. And yeah, they, they kind of have a bit more atmosphere at Flushing Meadows, don't they? Um, yeah, and also at the Australian Open when um, the 2Ks, Kyrgios and Kokonakis were going for it. Yeah. They brought in the riffraff. Yeah, yeah. All the NRL fans started showing Could up. you start a rival noisy tennis league? Like a live Where golf sort of. Live golf, it's a party. Yeah. Party tennis. You just you just go for it. You know, you've got cheerleaders, you've got, um, you've got like pumping music the whole time. That's a great idea. Yeah. Maybe it starts like a Black Clash type thing where you get, yeah. you know, famous athletes. Oh my god, the black clash of tennis. I was thinking of other sports that could do a black clash. The black clash of tennis. I mean you, doubles. You got like yeah, oh my god. And then you'd have a whole t- a whole day of tournaments. You got Kieran Reed yep. and Stephen Dan- Donald. Stephen Donald up up against Dan Vittori and Lulu Sun. <laughs> <laughs> Should have bladder out there. Um yeah, I th- th- I think that's a great idea. The ACC clash. Yeah. The yeah, the black clash, but spelt B L A C C. But I guess you know what's the other sport it would go? I mean, we're, we're bringing rugby and cricket players into the. I mean, the black clashes, rugby, cricket. Like, would you bring? I think you just go rugby and cricket again. Yeah, rugby. Like, you wouldn't bring like tennis, you, like Don't tennis have v squash, or Don't <laughs> have <to figure>. yeah. <laughs> Babington, Suzanne Devoy versus Dave Dobbin or something. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, uh, no, I think the Black Clash of Tennis is a, is a great idea. Um, overnight, they named the 14th Immortal. There was a lot of conjecture, yeah, certainly on this podcast, that it was going to be Cam Smith. Uh, it was Ron Coote, who, got to be honest, a little before my time. He will be the 14th immortal. Had the rangy lock forward won four premierships with South Sydney between 1967 and 71 before shifting to eastern suburbs and winning two more. So a six-time competition winner. And I guess he was, he was 80 years old. Yeah. Um, I saw the footage of him. Well, that's a bit triggering to call him immortal at 80 years old. Yeah. Because he's mm. probably not far away from mm. dying, mm. to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it also made me think that in my lifetime, I probably won't see Cam Smith get immortalised because <laughs> he's only like forty now. Yeah. Well, I mean, how how much interest do you want in it? Because if if it's if, yeah. if it's interest, I mean, shove Shawnee J in there right now. Oh, I think so. Stacey Jones. Yeah, Stacey Jones. Manu Butterfly put across through his own name a couple of years ago, but you <laughs> but, know, you know, we're forgiving. Yeah, Benji Marshall. Get a couple in there. So, yeah, Ron Coote was the 14th immortal that was chucked in there. Um, and the America's Cup team, I was just reading the article with uh, who's going to be in it this this time around. Yep. Because it starts in a couple of weeks. Um, in earnest, you know, obviously they're going to do their regatta actually starts today, prelim. Then the winners of that regatta and next one face us. Uh, team has your, your Burlings, your Chukes. Yep. Uh, Nathan Outridge, who is the Swiss team driver. Uh, all the guys that were down in Christchurch and were at the Sail GP this year. The Cyclers are back this year. Oh, great! So the Grinders are gone and they're back on the on the Cyclers. And uh, Hamish Bond is one of those. God, Hamish Bond. What an incredible career. Just pops his head back up. Totally. The, to do another job for the well, nation. He's just got a great set of lungs on him, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, and just, just loves the country. Are we still angry? About? America's Cup. Um, well, no, we, what, like losing it from our shores? Yeah. I don't think so. It doesn't seem. I, don't I think, think we we were pretty angry, but yeah, we were like, well, even I mean, when that, it is here, you can't see it. And but Burling and Chuk are such great guys, so yeah, you know. it's hard to be angry about that. Yeah. Um, but I did think that was a great excuse. Today is a Thursday. We do a Throwback Thursday every Thursday. Last week it was NPC. It's been Super Rugby before that, but I thought this week 
Now's as good a time as any to throw it back to 1995 when New Zealand first won the America's Cup. Oh, uh, yeah. Who was our man, the, the commentator? Um, Keith Pete, Quinn? Pete, Pete, Pete Montcommentary. Pete Montcommentary. America's Cup is now New Zealand's Cup. Uh, it was in 1995. New Zealand swept all five races to take the cup away from the US for only the second time in 144 years. Yeah. And this is why, because I was asking Jerry the other day, I was like, why do we give a shit about this? And it was because that, I, I don't really remember... The 95, like, I remember it happening. Yeah. When I was four. Um, but that was the whole Red Sock thing, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a lot of that there. Was that, did Loyal, Loyal was fired up at that point? I think Loyal was there. Yeah. Um, you had Dennis Connor walking out on Paul Holmes. Oh, did he? Yeah. I think it was the very first episode of the Paul Holmes show, which is the Seven Sharp. Yes. Of its time. Yeah. And it was right at the start, and there was an interview with Dennis Connor and it started uh, with a walkout. Yeah, it started with a walkout. Oh, yeah. What a way to start a TV yeah, show. Yeah, it was Mate, huge. We're starting a TV show in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, you ready for a walkout? What oh. would I have to say to you for you to walk out? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think, there's been, I think there were some walkouts in the original game of Thrones, I was going to call it. R- Ridgie, yeah, I keep trying to call it that as well. Ridgie walked out on the original Game, game of, of Thrones. Thrones. Game of Thrones. Um, game of Two Thrones. Game of Two Thrones uh, was when they kept replaying. There's that clip that's gone viral over and over again. When they're asking his missus about his haircut. Oh, uh, yeah. She says, I think it looks really cool. He looks really smart with that haircut. And he goes, hey. And then they just <laughs> kept replaying that about five times. And then he walked out. So I think if you dug up footage of me and my missus complimenting me and me going, hey, and then played it three or four times, I'd probably walk out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll be putting a, a, a couple of te- firing a couple of texts out your way. Tr- out tr- to your household. Trolling social media. Uh, Russell Coates and Brad Butterworth were the, um, the skipper and the tactician yep. of our boats, um, names that have gone on to do so much in sailing. What do you remember from the – from the first time New Zealand won America's Cup, I, I I remember the loyal part of it. Yeah, um, throbbing Dave I mean, Dobbin. Yeah, I mean it's 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 interesting, eh? Because I think no, was I in Dunedin at that point? Yeah, it's all such a blur. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. Did I, you? I, 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 it's all sort of come come together. Yeah, my my dad's a, a sailor. Oh, is he? Um, and where, so, where and, do they sail in Dunners? Yeah, out on the out on the harbour in the wee. Yeah, yeah, and roundabout. He goes in quite big sort of sailing situations. We always had a, a trailer sailor. And um, so I was kind of a little bit angry about yachting, really, because in sailing, because it was always my dad going, um, yelling at me, you know, uh, yeah. to do things like pulling the wrong rope. Yeah, pulling the wrong rope and, you know, going around, going around about and all that kind of stuff. And, and so I was kind of negative to sailing for, for, for a long time. Mm. Um, you know, like stuff your dad wants you to get into. <laughs> That's why I never joined the army. <laughs> I spent the first four years of my life on burning military camp, and I was like, fuck this for a job. <laughs> and someone might shoot me. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm the same with uh, with the sailing. I'd, I, I mean, also, I've got a lot of shame for when me and G Lane called the wrong race. We called it that, famously called that replay. Yeah, uh, you commentated an entire race. Yeah. That from, was a replay. Yeah, and, and we, so we thought we'd run the America's Cup. But we were, and there was no support from the um, from our support crew because everyone was on the uh, gin and tonics. And so Joe Jury, so we finally like, and Joe Jury is the great best of us, and he holds the whole AC together, ACC together. Yes. But finally, we commentate this whole race, and then someone tells us that, and then Joe Jury goes, "I thought it was a bit." <laughs> I thought this was a fourteen-minute-long bit. <laughs> I thought this was a bit. The best, the funniest part about that is. That was the first time that Lane ever put some prep into his commentary and he wrote a whole thing for when they finally crossed yeah, the finish right. line. Yeah, that's right. That's the most humiliating part. And so it's like no good to if it goes unpunished in, yeah. the, um, in the ACC. Yeah. Because he, that was the most effort he's ever put in. Well, that, well the interesting thing is the ACC Almanac box available for people by now. It's the history of the ACC. And um, me and G Lane were instrumental in the, in the creation of that book. So we've told a very one-sided story of that. Like, What's that's now the record. Well, that it was everyone else's fault, not ours. <laughs> that it was no support and that everyone was drinking and that, that we had. And and so that's now the official record. And really what it was was we were drinking. I don't think anyone, <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone cares whose fault it was. <laughs> I think the gag is you guys commentated a whole replay. Yeah, Jason. Well, the, the, the most humiliating part of it is we go, so similar to the race race on Tuesday, like it's exactly the same start. Like, and then we're like, this is just playing out exactly like Tuesday, blah blah blah, all the way through. And we go, oh my god, this is so similar to Tuesday. And at no point did we go, 
it's because the race has been delayed and you're commentating Tuesday's race. That was your insight. Yeah. It was fuck this looks like the now, last one. Now on the official record, it's Joe's jury's fault. <laughs> for not for not calling us morons and turning our mics off. <laughs> Um, yeah, Jason Hoyt's done that a million times oh, with yeah. replays of work. Oh, he's gone. Exact same delivery right through the same bets. <laughs> it's it's on a replay. Track. Oh, sorry. <laughs> replay. Um, all right, let's take one more quick break and we'll come back with yours, please. Yours, please. Brought to you by Leader, home of the lasagna topper. Just the one of them, but your chance to get involved with the show, give your feedback on the voicemail function, which is a little uh, microphone button in the bottom right-hand corner of your iHeartRadio app. goes a little something like this. Yours, please. Yeah, good day, fellas. Nah, I'm just, you guys should get behind it. The oh, this is the wrong one. Minute and the 77th the wrong one. Oh, do you know what I was just about to call a replay then? Because I was like, that guy always says. We have. That's like exactly what we've done. <laughs> I was like, we've just, the irony of that. Yeah, we were just because talking I was about, about go, I like how he says that. It's exactly the same. I was thinking it's exactly the same as he says that. The there fellas. Was, there was another one, and we'll we'll put it in and post. Here, listen to this. I'm just thinking about the Waz this weekend. We heard a lot of people say, and Sean EJ first try score, chuck some money on it. But what are the Warriors this smart? Because everyone's going to think they're going to go to Shorty J for a try. Set it up to make it look like Shorty J's going for the try. Then throw it out wide to Dell and he dots down in the corner. So I'm going to throw some money on Dell for first try score. Anyway, er, fuck South Canterbury. Yeah, that was great. Uh, yeah. He was talking about how <laughs> it's Sean Johnson's <laughs> it's Sean Johnson's last game, so everyone's going to be betting on Sean Johnson yeah. to score. But his point was that he thinks, why don't they use him as the biggest decoy of all time? Ah, and spin it wide to DWZ, and yeah. get on DWZ for the first try scorer. Yeah, right. Well, what would that would mean? That would mean the Warriors were complicit in you trying to make some money because it's currently yeah. isn't he paying seventeen dollars to be the first <sighs> try scorer? I think at the TAB, and you know everyone's going to be. You know, if there's an opportunity, you're just across the line, and you can hold it off and give it to Shorty yeah. J. You're gonna so he can score. I think that's where I would disagree with the caller. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, it, that is what everyone's going to be trying to do. Yeah. They're not going to be trying to... The opposite thing is because it's a it's a dead rubber match. You, that's right. So unless you really want to get people's TAB accounts that have yeah on on, on uh, Rick James Lesniak, then what are we... Yeah, it's too the, complicated. The other part of it is, so yeah, they're using Sean Johnson as a decoy in this scenario. Why is it DWZ that benefits from that? <laughs> yeah, that, like... That seems arbitrary. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it does. But, I, I think people will be... I think people will be standing over the try line yeah. uh, between the posts and a bit of a step to avoid any tacklers until Shawnee J gets there and then handing them the yeah, ball. Yeah, that's right. Um, but having said all of that, we do have a TAB hunch to put on and I'm sick of uh, having all of these pinned on me when they don't come in. So I'm going to put uh, $100 on DWZ to be the first try scorer. <laughs> it's all on you. I think his name's Blake. He uh, sent this one through. It's all on you, mate. That's paying $10.50. We're putting $100 on. It's going to pay out $1,000. Yeah. I mean, emotionally, we don't need... It'd be better if he was the last try scorer, you know, just before yeah. the end of the game. Yeah. You know, that would be great, you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm completely throwing the, um, the old scapegoat thing on Blake here. Um, <laughs> DWZ, first try scorer, the agenda hunch. Check it out. 10.50. 10.50. Money for jam. All right, let's knock this thing on the head for a Thursday and uh, we'll be back for a Friday episode of the Agenda Podcast tomorrow. Give him a taste of Kiwi. You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast. Brought to you by Export Ultra. For more episodes, like and follow on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.